All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss, and today's video, we're gonna talk all about protecting our figs, specifically the fruits. Because, you know, we work really hard throughout the season to water, fertilize, and care for our fig trees to only have some critter or pest ruin it at the end when we're actually harvesting our figs. I know a lot of you guys have these questions. Every year I get questions about how to protect them from squirrels, birds, chipmunks, fruit flies, wasps, ants. I'm gonna give you guys in this video just all the details, all the different things, the products, uh, different materials I use to protect my figs so that I can ensure myself a harvest. And we're gonna cover a pretty wide uh, variety of different insects and also animals. Um, I think though, before I be begin with, you know, how to protect our figs from like a bird or a squirrel, I think we have to talk about a little bit about what's obvious. And when we're growing food in general, not just figs, we're growing it in nature. And of course, when we provide a food source, something in nature is gonna find it and go after it. So I think one of the lessons that people need to really learn is that if you're gonna plant a fruit tree, you have to take care of it. So if you have a big fig tree, let's say, and it's just loaded with figs and it keeps dropping fruit to the ground and you're not harvesting on a timely basis, that's only gonna attract things like fruit flies when they rot, uh, wasps, uh, other insects, um, and then of course the animals are gonna find it and they're just gonna go to town. And it's much more difficult to get rid of them once they're there than to prevent them completely. So that's my recommendation. Once the birds and squirrels know that the fruit exists, it's hard to get rid of them. Just protect it from the beginning. As soon as you start to see ripe figs, throw the net over top of it or do whatever protection method you have to make sure that you're having a lot less of this pest and animal pressure. So let's talk about birds first. I think they, they get probably the most pressed. They're probably the most difficult with figs and probably squirrels as well. We'll lead into that in a minute. But the birds I always use, I think first and foremost, if you can use a net, I would. Nets are definitely the best defense. Now, some people will claim that their birds got through it. Sometimes they get underneath. Um, sometimes they even get stuck in the net. So I would recommend if you have a net or if you're buying a net, um, I would recommend something a little bit more expensive if you don't wanna go with the cheap stuff. This typically has smaller holes in it and that way the birds don't get stuck and you don't wanna to have to deal with that. It's a mess. It can be pretty crazy. Um, and so that's just one little thought there. Uh, do your best obviously to put the net over as well as you can and to tie it tight around the, the trunks and, and make sure that nothing can get in. Um, you know, you can also use things like stakes or other things to prop the net up above the tree. Uh, anything you can do goes a long way with a net. The other option and what you can do is instead of netting the whole tree is use something called organza bags. You probably have seen these before. And what you do is, these are little party favor bags. You basically bag every single individual fig on the tree. It could be a lot of work, but it's worth it. And so essentially you put this over top of the fig and then tighten this drawstring here. And then that of course protects the fig, but nothing's a hundred percent. You just try to do the best you can do. These are some options here I'm giving you guys. There's also reflective devices or materials like CDs you can hang and streamers that will deter birds. There's also bird scare devices. And then of course, you wanna think about the color of the fruit. Uh, certainly the light-skinned figs really don't get affected by birds. And if I could make them all light-skinned, I probably would, um, just so I can not have to deal with birds. Um, it's not always 100% of the time that's the case, but certainly they're less affected uh, by birds than the darker skinned varieties. So how about squirrels? Well, one of the best things I think for any ground animal is just to use yourself a fence. So this is, um, I don't exactly know what you wanna call this, but I typically use chicken wire. And so I'll get myself about two or three feet high chicken wire. Uh, the higher you can go, the better. And then I create a ring essentially all around my fig tree with the chicken wire. Uh, you unravel it and then you put these stakes through the chicken wire into the ground and that basically creates a ring. 
I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this with uh, mulching, mulch rings. Uh, people use it for worms. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty common way of just cre creating a fence, essentially. And so this little fence, believe it or not, can usually prevent almost all of the ground animals from getting to your figs. Uh, as long as the squirrels can't climb up something and jump over and then get into the fig tree, uh, you know, that is gonna prevent them from even getting underneath for the most part. Uh, groundhogs can be a real pain, but most of the time, if I, in the past, when I've constructed some kind of fence, the groundhogs do not get underneath. Um, let's talk about ants. This is another really common thing. One of the, um, oh, you know what, before I go on to ants, you can also trap animals. I wanna talk about that. I have right here what's called a WCS trap. And you can get this online. Um, a lot of the products and things I've mentioned other than this trap, by the way, are in the description. There's an Amazon storefront link. You can see all the products I've used and have used in the past and still use to this day, if you're interested. Uh, but this WCS trap is kind of my one way to eliminate uh, the squirrels. Uh, they come in different sizes, but they will just, I know this may be an unpopular opinion to some, but to me, this has been the best solution for them. Uh, there's also have a heart traps where you can relocate them. But when you have a lot of squirrels in your neighborhood and they just keep coming and they're getting every single fruit, you kind of have to do something. Some people obviously shoot them, others will trap them and then drown them. I mean, there's really crazy ways of dealing with these, these animals, but um, of course you can always trap them. Now let's talk about ants. And this is a product here called Tanglefoot that I have heard a lot about and I would recommend uh, to you guys as well that are trying to protect your fig trees from ants. It also works for scale and other insects that climb up the the trunks of our trees. Um, essentially what you do is it's a very sticky material. So you don't want to put it on the bark of your tree. You put it on tin foil um, or paper, let's say, and you wrap the tin foil around your trunk and then you apply the tangle foot to the tin foil. That way, any uh, ants that climb up from the soil, they immediately get stuck and they die. Pretty much the easiest way to avoid ants. Um, you can also, by the way, use duct tape and wrap it around with the sticky side on the outside, and that works out really well. Um, so there's a lot of solutions. I think this probably will also work for slugs. Uh, I also really deal with slugs a lot, believe it or not, here in, uh, in humid climates. And so if you can eliminate those three pests that I mentioned, you're pretty much looking really good. The last thing I wanna mention um, for uh, insects is fruit flies and wasps. Uh, the wasps and fruit flies, and even there's um, June beetles, I believe they are called. I can't remember the name of them, but there's a very large green beetle that will basically eat the rotten flesh, uh, the rotten fermented fruit of a fig. So the trick is with the wasps and also the fruit flies, you want to make sure nothing's rotten, fermenting, fallen to the ground. Uh, after a big rain, there's usually a lot of rotten fruit. Get all the fruits, harvest them prior to that um, if you can. And anything afterwards that's split, it's open, having a problem, looks really nasty, get it off the trees and dispose of it. I put everything in a bucket. Then sometimes I even fill that bucket up with a little bit of water and that attracts all the pests to that one thing. Um, you can even add soap to the water and that way if any of the pests kind of go in there, they'll sink and drown. Um, and so yeah, that's just one little thing there I would highly recommend uh, we covered, like I said, birds and squirrels, other animals. It's the same thing with traps. Uh, preventing them with nets and other things is going to go a long way. And then, of course, we just talked about ants and slugs and, uh, of course, fruit flies. So thank you guys here for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button. If you're still struggling with these uh, pests and animals, let me know down in the comments. And we'll see you guys for the next video. Take care.